Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide from a case of gynecomastia, and hence this is a lump in the male breast. So at low magnification, we can see that there are both parenchymal or epithelial elements and stromal elements. The epithelial elements are composed of these ducts, which we can see here, and the stromal elements are composed of pink collagen tissue, as well as some adipose tissue. The key feature of gynecomastia on histology is the presence of an increased number of ducts, but without accompanying lobules. In the female breast, usually there are larger ducts and then there are terminal ducts, which are surrounded by lobules. Let's have a quick look at the female breast, just to recap. This is a page taken from our online pathology resource, PathWeb, in the normal histology section. So we can see that this picture of the female breast shows ducts and lobules. Here is a magnified picture of a lobule, where we can see these round SNI and intralobular stroma. So we usually have lobules as well as ducts. Here is another lobule and another one here. Going back to gynecomastia, we only see ducts and we don't see lobules. And these ducts are lined by benign epithelial cells. Often in gynecomastia, we can see some degree of epithelial hyperplasia. As you can see, moving around in some of these ducts, the lining epithelium is more than two cells thick. And we can also see that there are some small papillary projections. So we still have the outer myoepithelial cell layer, and we have the inner epithelial cell layers. And as we move around, we can see there are some other small little papillary projections here. And there is a variable degree of epithelial hyperplasia. In the intervening stroma, we can see that there are a lot of these pink bundles of collagen. And as we move around in some areas, especially in this area, we can appreciate that there are quite a few spindle cells within the stroma. Some of these spindle cells appear to line slit-like spaces, so they kind of resemble blood vessels, but they are not true blood vessels. We don't see red blood cells within them. And this appearance, where you have slit-like spaces lined by these spindle cells, is known as PESH, which stands for pseudoangiometrous stromal hyperplasia. And this is a frequent phenomenon that is seen in gynecomastia. Let's learn a bit more about gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is a benign breast condition in the male breast. There is a separate gross pathology video or a talking pot describing a virtual pathology specimen. Uh, but very briefly, it is fairly common in the male breast with a trimodal age distribution at infancy, puberty, and at older age. And it is thought to be due to relative imbalance of estrogens as opposed to androgens. Clinically, it is more often bilateral, but can sometimes be unilateral, and it's usually painful or tender with a retroareolar lump. So there is this rubbery, grey-white subareolar mass, and you can actually access uh, this virtual pathology pictures, microscopy pictures, as well as the virtual pathology specimen through our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. The link for registration is in the video description. Microscopic features show that there are increased ducts, and these are not accompanied by lobules. So we have ducts without lobules. And just a very quick recap of the picture we found in PathWeb of the appearance of lobules with these small rounded SNI. So to compare gynecomastia on the left and normal female breast on the right, you can see here a lobule and these are the ducts. Just to remove the arrows to make it more clear, it looks like these ducts are quite naked. There sometimes may be hyperplasia of a ductal epithelium, which I also demonstrated earlier. And in these areas, we can see more proliferation, and here as well, of the ductal epithelial cells. And the stroma is variably thick or dense in terms of the collagen. Occasionally, there can be apocrine or squamous metaplasia as well, 
and even atypical ductal hyperplasia, which may give rise to increased risk of developing breast carcinoma. So in summary, this is an example of gynecomastia, where we have increased numbers of ducts, which are not accompanied by lobules, and these ducts show variable degrees of ductal hyperplasia or epithelial hyperplasia. And in between these ducts is a collagenous stroma, which shows also increased numbers of spindle stromal cells in some areas. There is also some adipose tissue in the stroma. And gynecomastia is a benign condition. Thank you.